Hello and welcome to World News. Amir Hnein here at the CNN's office and here's an update about what happened today. Four months ago, a new antibiotic called Tamafloxacin, under the brand name of Omniflox, was marketed. However, it had just been withdrawn by the FDA. The FDA received 50 reports of serious adverse events, including three deaths. These side effects included decreased blood glucose levels, anemia, and kidney and liver problems. Many patients are asking, why didn't the FDA know about these dangerous side effects of drugs, and how does it detect the post-marketing uh, side effects of these drugs. So here's a special edition of the CLN World News about the, these uh, side effects. It will consist of several interviews with uh, the FJ. My name is Atala Saleh and I am a clinical pharmacist working here at the FTA. Uh, the FTA is a federal uh, public agency that is responsible for ensuring that the drugs are efficacious and safe to our patients. Um, so we rely on voluntary reporting by our patients and by uh, healthcare professionals about serious side effects and we also rely on mandatory reporting by the manufacturers. Most patients and healthcare professionals rely to uh, report to the manufacturer first and then these manufacturers will report to us about the side effects. Mm -hmm. The reason why uh, these side effects are not detected in clinical trials are because uh, most of them are rare or uh, they are only apparent after uh, the drug is being given for a longer period of time uh, because the patients that are using these drugs often have several comorbidities, uh, often are using other drugs along with the, this drug that is marketed and because we also have some unstudied populations like pregnant patients and pediatrics that are going to use these drugs and because uh, some of these drugs are going to be used for unstudied indications. My name is Dana Khayat and I'm an epidemiologist working at FDA. Uh, there are several requirements in the reporting process. Uh, they are aimed at manufacturers and we encourage patients and healthcare professionals to follow these requirements. Serious adverse events, uh, meaning death, hospitalization, require, requiring a, a surgical intervention or that resulted in disability, should be reported to the FDA and investigated by the manufacturer within 15 days. The manufacturers should also submit a follow-up form within these 15 days. Uh, if this source is a scientific literature, a copy of the published article must accompany the report and should be translated to English if it's foreign. For non-serious adverse events, uh, they should be reported quarterly for the first three years after approval, then annually. For uh, over-the-counter medications, reports are only mandatory if they, were, uh, market, if they were marketed under the approval of NDA, NDA meaning new drug application. Unfortunately, uh, no law requires this FDA to review the safety and efficacy of the dietary supplements whether before or after this marketing process. So now that we've learned some general information about the adverse event reporting system, we're going to learn how to fill the Madwash voluntary report, and I'm going to pretend to be the patient. So uh, I'm going to pretend to be the patient. I'm SH. And uh, please note that we should not uh, write the patient's name or the social security number. That's why I wrote the patient's initials. And uh, Let's pretend that I'm 75 years old, that I'm a male, 80 kilograms, non-Hispanic, and white. So let's proceed. So this was an adverse event, and it resulted in a life-threatening condition. It occurred uh, on uh, the 12th of December. Uh, what was the problem? Uh, I felt dizzy, uh, sweating. The doctor told me uh, he, it was a uh, hypoglycemia. So the blood glucose was equal to 50 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, I know that uh, I am the patient and I'm a heavy smoker and the product is available for evaluation. Now we're gonna skip to the part uh, about the product. So uh, this is Demafloxacin uh, under the brand name Omiflox, 500 milligrams, as you can see. The manufacturer or compounder is Ahistopharma. The NDC number or the unique ID, let's say it's 12345 and let's say that the lot number is 3456. 
So the dose or the amount is 500 milligrams, uh, given as BIG and or. The date of initiation was on the 10th of, 10th of December 2018 until the 12th of December 2018 and the duration was of two days. Uh, I started taking this drug because of UTI, urinary tract infection. The product was not compounded, it, it was not as over-the-counter product and the expiry date was on the 3rd of uh, the 1st of March 2020. So the event stopped after discontinuing the drug and uh, the, event, the side effect did not reappear uh, because the, the drug was not here introduced. Now about the concomitant products or drugs that uh, I'm taking. Uh, I'm taking leucophage metformin, metformin 1000 mg uh, since 2005 up until now. So this section now is about the reporter. The first name is Sam, last name is Hilfiger, uh, the country is uh, USA, the state New York, the email uh, is samhilfiger at hotmail.com, I'm not a healthcare professional, my occupation is a consumer or a non-health professional, uh, I want to report this also to the manufacturer or the compounder and because I don't want my identity to be revealed, I put an X on this box. Okay, so now that I received the following adverse event report, uh, report, I'm going to evaluate it. So we as pharmacists receive over a thousand of adverse event reports per day, so that's quite a lot. Uh, we are considered as safety evaluators. We are assigned specific groups and classes of drugs based on our past experience and our past training. Uh, we work under the tutelage and guidance of several uh, team leaders who have substantial experience in the evaluation of these adverse event reports and who know what the limitations of this adverse event reporting systems are. So what we do is that we try to identify some potential signals. Uh, signals are defined as a previously unrecognized serious adverse event that was not identified in clinical trials. Uh, so when a signal is identified, we try to find additional similar cases by searching our database, by searching the literature, by contacting foreign regulatory agencies, or by contacting directly the WHO, the World Health Organization Center. So if the report is fully documented, we may contact the reporter for follow-up information, and we might also look for common trends, potential risk factors, or any other important information that might help us. Pharmacists aren't the only ones working in the adverse event reporting system. In fact, epidemiologists also have an important role to play. As medical epidemiologists, we have MDs, PhDs, and or Masters in Public Health. We help in the signal development by evaluating adverse event case reports and by identifying confounders. We are frequently asked to quantify and describe the exposed population. We also critique published and unpublished epidemiology studies and we participate in the design and development of protocols for epidemiologic studies uh, submitted by drug companies in areas of regulatory interest. I may also be consulted to find the incidence of adverse events and to estimate the uh, reporting rate of this adverse event. So when serious side effects are reported to the FDA, the FDA can take several measures. So it can go from issuing a black box warning to the drug, it can go uh, to changing the package insert and restricting the use and the distribution of the drug. Also, in severe cases, the FDA will withdraw the, market, the drug from the market. So the time between the detection of the side effects to the action of the FDA will take several months to years. All of this depends on the seriousness of the adverse event. The reporting system that you have implemented have several advantages. Uh, for example, it is a large-scale system as it involves many patients and any patient can be monitored through this program. In addition, it is very inexpensive, so it is cost-effective. Third, it, uh, helps, uh, it helps us generate new hypotheses about potential adverse effects of a specific drug. Uh, it helps us generate hypotheses about these side effects that were not previously discovered in clinical trials and that might require further uh, additional studies. Uh, we at the FDA consider three reports at least to be um, significant for us to study, to study more. And uh, finally, it is a great way for clinicians to contribute to public health. When clinicians are uh, reporting uh, some side effect, they are making a great contribution uh, for the healthcare system.
although the system has its advantages, it also has some limitations. First of all, there is difficulty with adverse event recognition. How can you know that this side effect is related to this drug? So we need further pharmacoepidemiologic study in order to strengthen this association. A second limitation is the underreporting. 10% of serious adverse drug reactions and 2 to 4% of non-serious side effects are reported to the British Spontaneous Reporting System, and this will lead to a harder uh, determination of the true reason for these adverse effect events. Also, this reporting system is subject to bias. For example, it's affected by the length of time the product has been on the market, the healthcare provider's awareness, and the target population. Another thing to note is that it is difficult for the FTA to estimate the total population exposure to the drug. And also, there is a bad quality report. The patients who report to the FDA don't write enough and necessary information in order to make things complete.